This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at FilmmakerU.com or, of course, follow us on Twitter at Filmmaker underscore U. Every week, we interview a film professional to discuss their work, and this week I'm joined by editor Sandra torres Grinovsky, uh, whose work includes Promised Land, The Opening Act, and more recently, Scrambled. Welcome to the show, Sandra. Thank you. Uh, Thanks I for get... having me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I guess my first question for you is, uh, you got your start with Dan Liebenthal. Yes, um, so what did you learn from your tenure with him? Oh my gosh, so many things. Um, you know, I started obviously at a very young age with Dan, pretty much out of college. And it, at the time he was cutting features and music videos, he owned a post-production house um, and a, a place that mentored a lot of music video editors. So there was a lot of that going on and he wanted someone to be in the feature world. So Dan pretty much taught me from the minute I started working with him. He, he taught me how to edit music videos and he mentored me and gave me feedback because he just basically threw me into a editing room and, you know, um, he had his first assistant editor at the time, Don, King teach me the avid. So it started that way. And then I started working on features with him as an apprentice. And it was sort of the same thing. You know, he, he always encouraged me to edit everything I could get my hands on, which is what I did. And he gave me feedback and opportunities. So that's how it went. Meanwhile, I was moving up in the ranks of uh, the film editorial world and learning to run the cutting rooms and all of that and obviously learning the business and how cutting rooms worked and so a lot a lot from him and a lot of story style so many things I could go on and on <laughs> I've been a camera person for 30 years and I fell in love with cinema I heard there was free film school in France and I wanted to get into the French film school I really didn't know anything at the time, but I knew at least how to take pictures. So I said, I'll try for the image department. And then when I miraculously <laughs> got into the French film school, I fell in love with working with the camera. You're following what's going to be in the movie. So that immediacy that the camera allows is what I loved from the beginning. I'm Kirsten Johnson, and this is my course about documentary cinematography. So now, you, now you've worked on Scrambled recently. Yes. Um, that was Leah McKendrick's feature debut. So, uh, as an editor working with a first-time feature director, what were uh, some of the things you had to sort of tackle, or how do you figure out that working process? Because they're not they're not into that rhythm yet of making a feature, or they haven't experienced it yet. Yeah, so Leah was was a first time director. Um, I had worked with another first time director as an editor uh, in the past. Actually, the opening act was a first time director, and they were they were somewhat different experiences because Leah, being a first time director, had such a clear vision for what she wanted and had experience through her short films and also having produced and written MFA and experienced as a writer. So she was she was very experienced in that sense. And, and I find with first time directors, the, the thing that is different about them from more experienced ones is knowing what they want and, and having a very, a very clear vision of how to execute and all that. So in terms of that, I didn't feel like I was working with a first time director. I think mostly what we had to navigate together were more like creative, balancing the creative of what she wanted and what needed to happen to get the movie out there and have you know more commercial viability. It's always a, a I think always a tug of war with films because 
it is a commercial uh, art form. So a lot of times directors and editors, everybody has the real vision for what they want things to be. And it, it may not necessarily be what everybody loves, you know, and it's always that balancing act. How do you maintain your vision? Because that's where the style and the integrity comes in. And how do you reach as many people as as you can. So I think that was mostly what we juggled in in her being a first time director. So how how did you balance that for Scrambled then? Like the uh, keeping her vision, but still respecting the need for commerce to play a role. I mean, really, I would just tell her if you want to keep this in the movie, you've got to like compromise. And she was very good at that. She was very, you know, she wants. She wanted her movie to be loved and and it and it has been well received. And and I think for her, and the reason she was so she's so smart, that's how she knew she needed to keep her vision was by hearing the feedback that said, people might not love this. You love it. We love it. We don't know if everybody's gonna understand it. And she said, well, I want to keep this in the movie. I want to keep my vision the way it is. So, and it's actually really fun for us. We sit here and we problem solve. How do we keep your vision and your integrity that, you know, that integrity and how do we make it so that everybody would, would, would get it, would love it. Um, so yeah, she, Leah's incredibly smart and talented. So she's quite easy to work with in that sense. Now, when I was researching for this, I saw somewhere that you had said that you like to um, draw out the as much emotion out of story and character as possible. So, how do you, how did you do that for Scrambled? Well, it's it's funny because the only answer, and I'm probably really repetitive when people ask me this, this is it's really always my instinct. I feel like if I didn't have my instinct, I'd be lost. And I'm sure that my experience plays into that instinct and I just naturally know what to do. But also it's really just a matter of when you're cutting a scene, it sounds crazy, but you just sort of hear a voice that says, I wanna see this next, I wanna see that next. Um, this character needs to do that, that character needs to do that. And then when, when you're reviewing things, you really just hold yourself accountable and you and you don't you don't consider yourself finished until you're feeling something whatever it is you're meant to be feeling whether or not you should be laughing or you feel like you should laugh or you want to laugh or you should feel moved in a certain way so that's how I know I've succeeded is if if, if I'm feeling something or even if it's just a montage and you and I want to feel good and I want to have a good time you know watching it it's just really about how you feel when when you're watching your work and that's kind of the, the barometer so is there a particular uh scene or moment in the film that was challenging for you to get it to work but you're really happy with the outcome yeah i think i think the montage scenes uh were the 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 most challenging for me in particular and uh, Leah will sort of laugh because she I always would slog through them and 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 because for me, I think I do lean into the emotionality of a scene and montages are a lot of work and they're they have a lot of cuts and they're these kinds of things that sort of just end up coming together at the end you start pulling selects and it feels a lot like a slog but then at the end you're really satisfied the process is really tough um and for me in particular not as fun or fulfilling as let's say the dialogue scenes or the emotional scenes and stuff like that so i would say that that was probably the most challenging and it's probably just because of my particular you know, way of being. And then these montage scenes were also somewhat challenging because they were kind of complex. They were they were moments where the character, Nelly, was, we were showing growth or introspection. And so they were part of her emotional journey. So, and, but yet we were trying to make them really enjoyable in a visceral way. So it was kind of challenging in the sense that we had a lot to accomplish and 
it was very hard sometimes to make sure that that emotional journey was was clear in the montage and that wasn't just being seen as oh just a fun dancey scene or you know stuff like that so but that made it fun too you know the challenges end up being really fun and and end up being really you get good results because you put so much energy into it now you sort you've mentioned you know getting the emotion out of things and what have you and working with that so one of the things with the with film is you're going to be testing it with an audience to make sure that it's working um how you know if i guess because when you test it with an audience they might not necessarily be on the same wavelength as you you know if it's a bad testing it can go crazy weird (laughs) or if it's so how do you uh you know when you're going through the testing process make how do you sort of take in the information that's being given to you so you know i guess try what i'm trying to think of is you know you might have a hundred people see it and there's, let's say there's five that are like, they didn't like a certain aspect of it, but they just might not be, have been in the right mood for that film. So how do you parse that out when you're looking at this data and make sure that you're doing the right thing for the film? Well, the most valuable part of a test screening, at least for me, is when you're sitting in the room and you can feel, um, what they're feeling and you were hearing the laughs or you feel, you know, the room is tense and all that. So I think the base level is starting out with what that room feels like, how people respond uh, to it. And yeah, it's true. And sometimes different audiences have different results. Sometimes you have a friends and family and that's a different result. And the larger the screening, the more you can gain from it. But with with the feedback and the data, we'll see repeating uh, feedback. And also we almost value the the criticism more than we do so what people love because a lot of times it's, most of the time it's valid, even if someone is in in an off mood or didn't get the film. And there's sort of, What's most important is, again, seeing the pattern, you see something repeated a few times, you know you have to address it, and then also deciphering what the note is behind the note, you know, understanding what it is that's not working, even if you think, oh, this is great, I love it, something's not right if people aren't receiving it, and so then that begins this work of, okay, what 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 are they feeling, what's not right, and then luckily we can keep you know, going back and and seeing what people have to say to see if we resolved something. So how do you, when you get the footage in for the first time, um, how do you sort of, I guess, assess it to figure out which, which shot you, you like to use? Like, what are you judging or how do you judge the, the performance when you first look at it? Well, (laughs) A lot of times there's there's not a huge amount of time, you know, to, to assemble everything and then present a cut and you always want to present the best cut. So, you know, it's a little embarrassing, but I'll say that I usually start with like the second to last take and you and usually I have an idea of what I want to see. So if that second to last take is is working, I'll leave it. If it's not working, I'll start digging through other takes and also, or or if it's not giving me what I want, if I have a certain point of view and I'm not getting it, then I'll start digging. And you'll also start to see a pattern in the dailies because, you know, every director is different. Every actor is different. You'll start to see a pattern of which is always the best take. It's sometimes the last, sometimes it's the first, you know, so so you'll start to see patterns and you'll know how to quickly go to those things. But initially I start off with the second to last. So now, I guess my last question for you, what would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure film or TV show to watch? Oh, well, there's so many, but the one that always comes to mind first, and I I don't know if this is so much a guilty pleasure because I think it's a brilliant film, is probably The First Wives Club. Oh, yeah. My ultimate favorite films. What is it about that, that, uh, that film? I think it's so touching. It's such a touching film. It's so funny. The actresses or actors are so good and it's so well made. It's just such a perfect um, story in the sense that 
it's entertaining. It's got so many ups and downs. It's funny and it looks beautiful. So, so it's just, so, which is why I say, even though it's a, it feels like a guilty pleasure, it's really in my mind, a very good film. Well, and if, if I remember correctly, cause I interviewed Dan Liebenthal many years ago and I think his was uh, the Disney sports movies for kids. <laughs> that which... doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and he was just like, there's something about them. You know where it's going to go, but it's just a fun film to sit down and enjoy. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me interview today. Oh, thanks for having me. It was so much fun. And that's it for this week, everyone. Uh, make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com or of course, follow us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching. This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs.